Hi, this circle guide allows me to cut perfect circles with a plasma cutter. Stick around and I'll show you how I made it. I started out by centre drilling some mild steel round bar in the lathe. This part will be the base that goes at the centre of the circle. I then took a quick clean up pass on the outside diameter just to get rid of any rust and rubbish off the surface. I could then mark out for my shoulder length. I use the sharpie while the lathe's spinning to mark out a nice line that's easy to spot so that I can just machine up to it. I did a series of roughing passes with a carbide insert tool to just get the bulk of the material removed and get it down to size. Just knock the sharp corners off with a file. I then machined down a short section for a rose joint. The rose joint allows the base to stay still in the centre of the circle and the arm that goes out to the plasma cutter to revolve freely around it. Here I am doing a quick test fit of the rose joint. I then parted off to length, but instead of just driving the tool all the way to the centre and letting the part fall off, I stopped a couple of millimetres short, gave it a wiggle with some pliers, and then pulled the part off. Now doing this, you end up with an annoying little nipple on the back of the part, which is normally a problem, but in this case, I want that nipple. So I turned the part around and set about refining its shape. I used a 45 degree tool to make it nice and pointy. I'll show you what it's for later in the video. I then cut an M6 by one thread on the other end so that I could fit a handle. I used a die rather than screw cutting on the lathe as for a thread this small the setup time really isn't worth it. For the handle I found a little off cut of a C-tile rod so I drilled one end 5mm which is the tapping drill for an M6 thread. To cut the thread I put the tap in the tailstock of the lathe and left the break off. I could then turn the chuck by hand and as the thread is cut the tailstock gets dragged along the bed of the machine by the tap. I then took a clean up cut along the outside of the handle. I find that a really sharp high speed steel tool gives a really nice finish on a CTOL plastic. I do always seem to end up with that great big mass of spaghetti though. I then cut in a little feature to give the rose joint some clearance. The reason for the tool post being rotated is just so that I've got a little bit of clearance so that the tool holder doesn't hit the part. I then flip the part over so that I could cut it to length and shape the other end of the handle. I don't have a big profile tool so I just roughed in the shape of the handle by eye. There's that spaghetti again. Once I'd got the basic shape cut with the high speed steel tool I could use a hand file to refine it to what I wanted. If you're ever doing this yourself, other than the obvious point about not sticking your fingers in the spinny bit, make sure you clean the file regularly because it gums up really quickly. I then gave the handle a final dress up with a little bit of sandpaper. Mmm, smooth. Time for a test fit I think. The rose joint goes on like this, and then the handle just screws onto the top like this. There's plenty of friction between the plastic and the steel in the thread, so it shouldn't need any thread lock or anything like that. To make the collar that clamps around the plasma cutter head, I started out by drilling a 20mm hole in some mild steel round bar. I needed a 23mm hole, but I didn't have a drill big enough or a boring bar small enough, so I ended up using my internal threading tool as a boring bar. The results were acceptable, but the surface finish was a bit rough. I then face the end of the part square. This machine has a powered cross feed which makes for a really nice job. I took a little clean up pass down the outside of the part, zeroed out the dials and then I could get on with removing the material to get the part down to size. I'm doing a 0.75mm cut at 0.2mm per revolution. The chips and the surface finish were spectacular. With the part down to 32mm diameter, I put a little bit of round bar in the tailstock and slid it up inside the part. This is to catch the part once I've parted off. It saves going and looking for it in the bottom of the machine. And here it is. The plasma torch goes in like this. Next I need to make a little piece that will attach to the holder like this. There's going to be a piece of threaded rod that goes between this piece and the base which will set the distance for the cutter to the centre of the circle. The threaded rod will be 6mm in diameter, so I drilled a 6.5mm hole through the centre of this part to give it clearance on the rod. I then turned the outside diameter down. A much smaller cut here, as I've got a lot of stick out of the chuck. Over to the mill now. 
To make sure I had a nice fit up between this part and the part that goes around the plasma cutter head, I used a 32mm hole saw to notch out some material. Hey, there's that voice stop that I made. Make sure you go and check out that video if you haven't already seen it. And here's how the two parts fit together. This technique using the hole saw is really popular for things like roll cages and tube fitting. With the two parts welded together, it was back into the milling machine. I'm using a slitting saw to cut a slot halfway through the assembly. You can see I've left a small gap in the weld so that I don't have to cut through the weld which will be harder than the base metal. Here are the two machined parts, cleaned and ready for a little bit of rust prevention. I use a black phosphate treatment to protect the parts. This is really easy to do in the home shop. If you'd be interested in seeing a detailed video of how to do this, then let me know in the comments and I'll do one for you. Here's the finished parts ready for assembly. Let's put it together, shall we? First the rose joint. It's a light push fit. Then the handle. I've given it a bit of a clean since the last time you saw it, but let's not be too precious. It will never be clean again after the first time it's been used. I found a little bit of 6mm threaded rod to use as the arm, and put a little nut and washer on it to act as a lock to make sure it doesn't come loose. Better just nip those up with a spanner. On the outer end, I fitted a flange nut, followed by the torch holder, and finally another flange nut. The torch goes in like this, and tightens like this. By adjusting the position of the torch holder, you can adjust the radius and therefore the size of the circle you want to cut. Remember that little nipple we machined onto the bottom of the base? Well, here's what it's for. The nipple is the same size as the dimple made by a centre punch. So I can position the nipple in the centre punch hole and never lose the centre of the circle. Let's see it in action, shall we? I'm using an Artec 30 amp plasma cutter on its minimum setting of about 15 amps. And I'm cutting 16 gauge mild steel. Well, I'm happy with that. Let's do the rest of the circle. Excellent. I'm really pleased with that. Another valuable addition to the toolbox. Thanks for watching.